What is up, all of my beautiful freaking people? Welcome back to another episode of FML Talk. Today is a very special episode for me because someone very near and dear to my heart who has known me since I was a little girl is here and we are going to take a trip down memory lane. So sit back, grab a drink, maybe a few tissues, and welcome to FML Talk. Oh my god. Wait, how old was the other girl? 19. Can you believe that shit? Hey, this is Gabrielle Stone. Good book. Have you gotten a chapter six? <gasps> he did what? 48 hours? What a dick. Yeah, but have you seen all the photos on her Instagram? And this is FML Talk. Oh no, she didn't. Y'all know I love a good self-love cocktail and occasionally an actual cocktail. I have always notoriously hated the taste of alcohol and needed it disguised in a good mixology cocktail until I discovered Neft. Because Neft is a premium vodka in its purest form with non-GMO rye, it has a light taste full of character. Not only is Neft one of the best tasting vodkas I've ever had, it also comes in the cutest packaging I have ever seen. Their unbreakable barrel keeps it chilled for up to six hours, making it the perfect drink to take just about anywhere. Join me in adding a little actual cocktail into your self-love cocktail with Neft Vodka. Cheers. Okay, you guys, today is very special. I'm very excited. Um, when I was a little girl growing up with my mom and dad, I had a nanny who was so near and dear to my heart. She then became my mom's assistant, um, became kind of like a, an older sister to me uh, throughout the years, did my makeup for a bunch of different important events in my life, and eventually became one of my bridesmaids at my wedding. So she has literally been by my side since I was five years old, and I'm bringing her on today to talk about something that happened to me in my childhood. She was there the day that my dad went down from a heart attack and left this earth. And recently in my adult years, I reached out to her to discuss her perspective of what happened that day. And I think there's a lot of really great insights into seeing a six-year-old's perspective of the situation and a 22-year-old's perspective of the situation and my mother's perspective and kind of how the different people handled the different types of trauma and how we feel about it now, how it changed the course of different people's lives. So we're going to start out on the lighter side and take a kind of trip down memory lane to her talking about my mom in the early days, my dad in the early days, which is really special for me because not a lot of people that are in my life know my dad really well, and she is one of them. And uh, some ridiculous stories about me traveling when I was younger, and uh, then we're going to get into some heavier stuff. So I want to give everybody kind of a blanket trigger warning that we are going to talk rather graphically um, about the day that this happened. So I want everybody to be prepared if you have any triggers around um, death that this might bring some stuff up, but it was definitely a healing experience for me, and I hope it, it brings you that as well. So let's get into it. How do I even want to introduce you? I was going to say Nell Kristen Loris, and then I was like, well, maybe just Nell, maybe Kristen, maybe Pookie. Which name do we go with? I think we're going to go with Nell for now. Welcome to FML Talk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, darling. Um, I'm so happy to have you here. This is like oddly full circle. You were my nanny growing up and then became, you know, mom's assistant, my makeup artist over the years and were my bridesmaid at my wedding like we've been through it since i was what four five five wild dude and here we are and here we are are you nervous interestingly slightly yeah <laughs> why <laughs> uh, because it's just like a whole thing this is like a whole thing now it's a whole production You're a whole thing we're important <laughs> you've always been a whole thing but this is like everybody else knows about it this now. is true um so can you take me back to how and when you came on to work with mom oh okay um well i was in college and i was very young I was 15, by the way. You'll, for the record, you'll always be 30 to me. I know. Even though I'm 33 it. now. 
<laughs> right. And uh, I was I was in college, and I had actually always wanted to be a nanny. I had babysat kids my whole life at some point or other, but I had really actually wanted to be a nanny. And um, I found this advertisement that was. Um, the funny part of the ad, I found it on my college job board and the last telephone number was cut off. And I was like, this is the perfect job. I want this job. I don't care. I'll call 10 people if I have to, oh to God. get the right number. And I said to this woman, I was like, do you have a card for this? Because it was like a fax printout, you know, in <laughs> mom's handwriting. Was. Oh and, uh, my God. Uh-huh. And wait, and she posted this on a college campus? On um, Yeah. What? Yeah, she posted it like because she knew there'd be young college people probably taking, you know, early childhood development oh, credits or something. Oh, my God. And so I was like, do you have a card for this with all the information written out? Because they usually did. She goes, oh, no, sorry. And I went, well, the number's missing. She goes, oh, that's okay. Just take it down. She goes, nobody's going to call it. And I went, great. So then I knew nobody would see it after <laughs> me. So I ripped it off the wall and I kind of looked at the little number and I was like, I think it's a four. So I called and I hear this voice and I was like, hi, I don't know if I'm, I was leaving a message. Right. And I said, I don't know if I'm calling the right number um, because the number was cut off, but I'm calling about the nanny position, blah, blah, blah. So I, you know, left my information and then I get a call back and uh, mom's like, oh, hi, you know, this is Dee, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, great. So we set up an interview for me to come in. She tells me later, she had already hired someone. Oh, really? She'd already hired someone to be your nanny. Shut up. No, she had. But because my message, she said, when I heard your message, I knew that I had to meet you. And I was like, really? And she's like, yeah. Mm. So then she brought me in and we talked on the phone and she said, oh, I'm an actress. And I was like, okay, great. You know, like I didn't, wasn't going to ask, you know, right. Well, how do you, who are you? (laughs) Right. I don't remember if she told me or not on the phone. I can't remember that part, but, um, and, uh, and then I, you know, came to meet you guys. Um, I came to meet, well, mom and dad first. Right. I met them first, okay. which is because they're very smart. And um, and they liked me enough and they gave me the pass and then I got to meet you a different day. Yeah, okay, so all I remember from this like experience, which is obviously very spotty because I was a child, um, mm-hmm. is that there were a couple people that came that day, or maybe it was a different day, um, and I had this like sandbox that was a big turtle, Mm -hmm. a big green turtle, and like the shell came off and there was (laughs) sand inside it, whatever. Um, And I had asked this one woman, like, do you want to come play in the sandbox with me? And she's like, oh, honey, I can't, my nails. And she had these like long ass, you know, acrylic nails on. And I was like, oh, okay, like, you're not not the jam. (laughs) And then you came in and I remember clocking the fact that you had these longer nails. And I was like, she's not gonna want to play in the sandbox with me. And I was like, okay, I'm going to ask anyways. Like, do you want to play in the sandbox with me? And you were like, yeah, let's go. And I was like, oh, okay. That's my first recollection of meeting you. <laughs> yeah, I just remember mom opening the door and you were standing behind her leg. Aww. It was really cute. And she was you were just sort of looking up at me. And, um, and she's like, well, we're playing Peter Pan in the back bedroom. You want to come join us? And Aww. I was like, sure. So we went back and we played, you know, make-believe for a while. And then... You know, there was that there's that door on the back bedroom yeah, that yeah, leads yeah. out to the backyard, leads out straight to yeah. the backyard. And I was like, um, uh, mom had to go do something. And she said, well, um, why don't you guys go um, play in the backyard and I'll come out in a minute. And you looked at me and you go, come on, Kristen, let's go. And you like turned and ran out the door. And she just stood there and looked at me really weird. And I went, what's wrong? She goes, oh, she doesn't do that. Really? Yeah. She goes, she hasn't done that with anybody. And I went, oh. And I went, she's like, we'll go. And I went, okay. <laughs> so I was like, bitch, go. Went outside. <laughs> and then we went outside and that's when it happened. We went to the sandbox and we were playing and you were like, oh, you're not worried about your nails? And I was like, no, that's what soap and water and a brush are for. And I was like, no. And you were like, oh, okay. And so we had oh, fun digging around God. in the sand. And I love it. Okay. So for people that are like, why the fuck did she introduce her as Nell? And now you're saying, come on, Kristen, let's go. Um, so your birth name? Yeah. The name I was raised with was Nell. But, you know, as happens when we grow up, nobody wants to be different or weird or whatever. So right. I changed it to another middle name that I have, which is Kristen. Right. So half of my people in my life know me as Kristen and half of them know me as Nell. And some of my friends that know me as Kristen also call me Kiki, which will come up later. But right. yeah, so you can call me either. It doesn't matter. I refuse 
to on a regular basis call you Nell because <laughs> I have an aunt Nell and you guys oh, are that's right. very vastly you different. You always forget that. And it was just like, no, I can't do it. Um, <laughs> at least when I switched my name, it went from Gabby to Gabrielle. Right. Like right. you were full on like, hey, my name's Kristen. Just kidding. It's Nell. I was like, wait, no, this isn't not Nell. Um, and it's funny because my whole family, my entire life has always called me Nell. So there's right. always been a faction of people that have called me that. Oh, that's so but, weird. But yeah, it's not, you know, my uncle used to make jokes. He wrote like a card once and it was like, Maria, Nell, Kristen, TJ, Kiki, like all these <laughs> nicknames that I had or whatever. And I was like, very funny. Yeah, you're so, like, pick one. Yeah, um, it's fine. Okay, so y- there are very few people that I know as an adult in my life that I'm close with um, that were very close to my mom and also knew my dad. Mm-hmm. And you're one of them. Mm-hmm. So can you give me and everyone listening a little bit of insight as to your experience with dad? Oh, sure. Yeah, Um It's funny because the minute mom and dad opened the door, I was like, oh, I know exactly who these people are. Like, I didn't, I couldn't name something necessarily that each one of them, well, obviously mom, I mean, everybody knows CT, but I was like, oh, right. Cause like you grow up and it's like, (laughs) this man's been on my television my whole life. Right. But, um, right. Because a lot of people don't realize that my dad was like the playboy of Hollywood in, you know, the seventies and eighties. Like when mm -hmm. he met mom, people were like, you're going to get cheated on. You're going to get like, you can't fucking tame Christopher Stone, dude. What are you doing? And mom's like, I'm from Kansas. Yeah. And he was like, you're going to be with me now. And that is it. Yeah. And she was like, yes, sir. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But like he was on, you know, Days of Our Lives and Dallas. Like he was in everything. He was on every television show growing up. I mean, honestly, he had like a series called The Surgeons or whatever that was on when I was little, but I never saw that. But he was on like every other television show. I mean, I think like The Love Boat and Fantasy Island. I mean, I think he was on everything. Yeah. And um, aside from being in all the movies that were huge um, when I was little. And um, but he was really nice. I mean, I was intimidated, obviously, um, but by mom and dad, because I was just trying to make a good impression. Right. But um, but yeah, they were both really, really nice nice and they just asked me a lot of questions and I was like no I've never been a nanny before but I babysat kids for years and I'm in school and and um yeah they just asked me a lot of questions and they're like okay great do you want to come back and meet Gabby um like on Thursday and I was like sure I remember it was a Thursday I don't know why I remember that (laughs) and um (laughs) and so um but yeah they were they were both really really nice and um but as far as like dad goes, once you get to know him, he has he has a, he had a very dry sense of humor. He was very very sarcastic, yeah. which is um, tough to get used to sometimes when you're sort of like young and new and sort of yeah. like intimidated. And but he was always so so sweet to me. He was always so sweet to me. But he was joking around me one day, and he looked at me and he was like, he said something that was like. I took it too seriously. I thought it was right. like uh, you know he said something like "fuck off," and I was like. <gasps> <laughs> and I like literally thought he was being serious. Like, Should I leave? Should I go? <laughs> right, right. And I like walked out of the room and Deke mom comes in. She's like, I'm crying. And she's like, what is wrong oh with you? Oh my God. And I was like, I'm sorry. I didn't. She was like, oh my God. Oh my God. She's like, Christopher was kidding. That is how he is. And I was like, oh, my oh, God. oh, oh, okay. All right. Okay. And she's like, Kristen. And I was like, I didn't know. I didn't know. And she's like, he loves you. And I went, he does. And she's like, yes. Because I mean, at this point, I'd been with you guys for eight or nine months, probably. It was when we were living up in Murphy's when yeah. my mom went to go shoot a television show. And it was so funny. He laughed at me later. We were all laughing about it. And it was just like, that's just how like dry and like how deadpan he could deliver something. And that's where I get that from. I'm yeah. the same way. And mom is not like that at all. So no, that makes no. a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was, he was just, he was impressive. Like yeah. he was just an impressive person. He was so, you know, tall and good looking and like masculine and like funny, but like sensitive. And like, he was just really, he was really an impressive person in general. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how old were you when you started nannying me? I was 20. That's fucking insane. That's like a child. I know a child really nannying young. a child. <laughs> I know. I know. But it's funny. I think mom was really like, I just want somebody who's going to like be responsible, but have yeah. fun with Gabby. Like yeah. she wanted somebody to have fun with you. And your previous nanny had been a lot older. Yeah. Like kind of more of grandma. And so she wanted somebody that was going to like play with you and like more actively and do yeah. stuff, I think. So. And to be clear, just because my mom will definitely want me to highlight this is that 
they wanted a nanny for specifically like when they were on set working it wasn't like she was just like never home and with me oh no no no, no. <laughs> she one of the first things mom said to me was okay so just so you know I'm not looking for a nanny because I'm not going to be with my daughter. She goes, in fact, you're going to be doing a lot of other stuff because the whole point of me getting a nanny is so that I can spend more time with my daughter. Right. She said, so I may send you out to do, and this is kind of how I became an assistant ultimately, because she's like, I might send you out to run errands or make phone calls or do this or that so I can be with Gabby. Yeah. She's like, and then when I can't be, then you're there. And I was like, okay. So she was never one of those people that was like, I'm going to farm my kid out for somebody to raise them. <laughs> Absolutely not. It's yeah. never how she was. <clears throat> and you got to like travel with us a lot when when I was growing up you know because mom would you know there was a time where we went to South Africa there was a time where we went to New Zealand which we'll get into all that um we obviously we went up and lived in Murphy's which mm -hmm. is what up in Northern think? California yeah. it's like it's right by Sacramento yeah um so there was like a lot of travel involved it was kind of like mm -hmm. you became part of our family very very quickly yeah, it was really fun. I didn't expect that to happen. Like she had said that might happen, but I didn't really, I hadn't traveled a lot by that age because, you know, I was still very young. Yeah. But um, our first trip was to Hawaii mm -hmm. that I really took with you. There was one to Vegas. That might have been before or after. I'm not sure, but we all went to Vegas. And, um, and then we lived up in Murphy's and then we ended up going to Pennsylvania. We ended up going to Canada a couple times. We ended up going to... Mexico, like we, you know, but the big trips were, yeah, some, were, were uh, New Zealand and South Africa, which yeah. was the best. That's like, I mean, d a day on a plane. Full day, yeah. Yeah, and there were times in New Zealand where you and I flew, right? Yeah, and I mom was already mom. there. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like, that's a tall order. Here, take a six-year-old on a 24-hour plane flight and don't drug her to go to sleep. <laughs> right. And don't drink any champagne yourself. Right. <laughs> which mom didn't have to say, but I was just like, they're like, would you like a pre-flight drink? Would you like an in-flight drink? I was like, nope, because this sucker's going down. I got to be like <laughs> awake and ready. I was like, no champagne. Thank you. Like, oh, my no, God. Um, <laughs> but but uh, the, um, oh, my gosh, what were you just saying that made me... Oh, God, I totally lost it anyway. But yeah, the, it was. It, oh, that's what it was. Flying to New Zealand. She's like, well, you're going to have to land in Auckland and then you're going to have to get Gabby and all the luggage off the plane <laughs> and then onto another plane to get to Wellington. Because when you fly into New Zealand, everybody lands in Auckland. Yeah. But then to get anywhere else. And I was like, OK, no problem. Great. Six year old, five suitcases and a transatlantic airport i've never been in before great sure no problem like i was yeah i was a little, was a we, little we, tra we, tra we travel so light oh yeah for sure um i'll never forget mom wanted she's like make sure you bring me a jar of skippy oh they don't my have god. it here i was like okay you know mom and her peanut butter yeah She's so funny oh my god so, i love it but yeah it was it was uh it was exciting to say the least okay so i don't know if i ever told you this i can't remember it must have not been on the new zealand flight it must have been south africa because i was in fourth grade at that time um and i remember you were asleep and i watched the movie can't hardly wait probably four or five times because it has like jennifer love hewitt in it and like they're the whole movie centers around it's like ethan embry the whole movie centers around them being at a party and like seth green's trying to like get laid for the first time before he goes off to college and like there's like sex and there's <laughs> partying and there's drinking and it's like you know it was my first like ooh as a fourth grader right and i was like "Ooh, this is like my first kind of like pg-13 movie experience i watched that thing back to back four times before i think you woke up that's hysterical. and then you were like what the fuck are you i mean you didn't say that at the time right. but you were like what are you watching <laughs> it's like yeah. oh it's just this you know movie that's on the the tv plane you were like okay we're gonna turn this off now yeah you always were <laughs> sneaky that's just how you were but i i know for a fact that i waited till you fell asleep because i always do but then you must have woken up you didn't have great sleep when you were little so yeah i still probably woke up <laughs> and you were like "Ooh, the tv and yeah so, yeah so yeah. i'm not really surprised to hear that but I do remember I was probably like on the second or third flight because on the first flight, I don't think I slept the whole time. Yeah. It was like a, Ugh, it was 18 miserable. hours or yeah, something. Yeah, it's something ridiculous. I don't remember, but it was um, Okay. And then there was a plane ride that we took. I believe it was from South Africa. Again, your memory. I'll, I'll go with your memory because I, I was young. Um, it was from 
where we were in South Africa to where we were going to go on safari. And it was like a very small plane. Mm -hmm. And I peed in someone's sweatshirt. Oh, no, you that wasn't with me. Um, oh, OK. That was actually when mom had taken you to Brazil, I think, a year or two before yeah. with like Jimena. Or Jimena, something. yeah. Yeah. So, um, no, that was with them. When you uh, yeah. were on a little flight going from somewhere to yeah. somewhere like a puddle jumper or something. Yeah, and there was no bathroom yeah. on the plane. And uh -huh. I was like, mom, I, mean, I have to fucking pee. And, <laughs> and she, just said she took off her sweatshirt and had me pee in it like a diaper. <laughs> and here we are, guys. Welcome to FML Talk. <laughs> I like yeah, that we uh we did we um I don't know how to remember this but we flew from Cape Town to this little tiny is the smallest uh airport yeah. I've ever seen in my life I think it's called Skakuza and we landed and I'm not kidding there was like a frond covered like hut yeah and you walked inside and there were like five desks or ten desks and that was the airport wow and that's where we did the safari that's where we did the safari when we flew in there were like giraffes on the ground i was like oh my god this is real <laughs> you're like an elephant walking across the tarmac you're like yeah here, right? welcome yeah no. um we had some pretty incredible times we're gonna now t take a turn now that we've laughed and reminisced mm -hmm. um because recently Full disclosure, we're not going to talk about what kind of substance I was influenced by, but I was under the influence of a little bit of party um, with Tay one night, and I took it upon myself to call Kristen <laughs> at like midnight after I texted to see if you were awake, and you were like, oh my God, what's wrong? And I was like, no, nothing. Um, and was like, are you okay? Is mom yeah. okay? Is yeah. Tay okay? Is Everybody's it? okay? Okay. okay. You what, why are you calling me at midnight, midnight? on a Thursday um, or Friday? Yeah. Um, and I had gotten into a conversation with Tay about, you know, how it was when I lost dad and like my memories from that. And I was like, you know, I've never asked Kristen what it was like on her end to go through that and like what she experienced through her her perspective and for some reason that night i needed to call you and find out um and it was really interesting for me and i'll tell you why kind of after you relay the situation but i the way i remember it and i was six so like you know it's spotty um was i i vividly remember like running in to mom and dad's room and it's the bedroom that she still sleeps in, but her bed is, it used to be against this wall and now it's on that wall. Mm -hmm. So I can still see like how the old setup was. Mm -hmm. I ran in cause I was like, yeah, Saturday morning, like cartoons with dad rocking. Um, and he wasn't in the room. Their master bathroom is attached to that. So I remember running into there and seeing dad on the floor. I feel like he was in white for some reason. I, you'll, you can correct all of this later. Um, and, he was on the floor. And so I remember racing back to the kitchen and being like, Kristen, daddy passed out. Um, and I remember you like racing past me by like the armoire and going into the bedroom. And like, that's pretty much the, the very picturesque like scene that I can still see. And then I remember being in my bedroom with you having to come in and talk to me about everything. Um, obviously once i called you a lot of things um were filled in and it was really crazy to see your perspective of it so can you kind of like walk me through that day from what you experienced and like how old you were and all of it um <clears throat> yeah sure i was about i think i was 22 and um to do just a slight bit of backup, dad had had some health issues yeah. just prior. So we went to go play baseball at a park because dad loved baseball. You know, he came out to Hollywood to try out for baseball teams, blah, blah, blah. He taught you about baseball. You guys watch baseball together. I played, I was playing baseball. Yeah, you were playing baseball. And so. <clears throat> All boys team. I was a fucking prodigy. You, Don't you forget it. <laughs> you were ahead of your time, girl. And you were better than most of them, which was usually the case. And, um, and so we went to the park and uh, he didn't say anything, but almost immediately after we got there, he wasn't feeling well. And, um, he, but I didn't know that he just went over and got like a seven up from the ice cream truck and mm -hmm. like came over with this seven up. And I was like, Oh, so we're getting ready to start, you know, hitting balls. And, and then he sat down mm -hmm. and I was like, what is going on? Cause your dad was old school. Like he was ex military, like ex athlete right. ex, like, you know, Mr. You know, Marine. Right. Yeah. And, um, 
And not to say that, you know, especially with mental health crisis in this country, not to say that people shouldn't show their emotions or if they're sick, they absolutely no, should. No, it was just but not your dad like was old him. school. Yeah. And it wasn't like him to just sit down on the grass. Like, yeah. that's, how, that's how, like, regal dad was like, he's not going to sit down on the grass. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is he doing? And I walk over and he was, like, kind of trying to burp. Like, he drank the 7-Up. And right. I was like, what's going on? I was like, hey, what's going on? And he was like, yeah, I just got, like, you know, heartburn or something. And I knew, I knew there was something wrong. And I was like, I don't know why. And what's funny is, is that I was very timid in a lot of ways. And I was very... Um, uh, you know, just reticent to ever sort of be confrontational in any way with people or whatever. And um, uh, but I, and I was like, OK. And I walked away and then we were doing stuff and he was still sitting there and I walked back and I was like, what's up? And he was like pressing his like the middle of his chest. And I was like, he's like, I don't know. And I went, we're leaving. Yeah. I said, you've got 10 seconds to decide whether we're going home or we're going to the hospital. We are leaving. Well, of course, he's going to be like and, home. Right. Well, such what's, a man thing to do. <laughs> right. But what's weird is we got in the car and from the park when we when we were pulling it, you were like, why are we leaving? I was like, oh, dad's not feeling it. We're going to go to the doctor. It's fine. And um, so when we pulled out of the park, he goes, go right. Right mm. was the hospital. Left was home. Mm. And so I said, OK, um, I. Oh, my God. It's so weird. I can like I don't remember this, but like I know the park. So I know which way you're turning like out of shoop. Right. <laughs> to exactly. go to West Hills Hospital. And it's also weird because I'm just thinking to myself. I don't remember who said it. If he said it, he must have said, you drive. Right. Because he drove us. I don't yeah. drive his car, his Mercedes. Right. I was like, I wasn't. He's like, you drive. Right. So I Also, for context, mom was in New Zealand at this moment. Yes. Shooting a movie. Yes, she yeah. was. Okay. And actually, uh, we had already gone to yeah. New Zealand. We had already been there for two weeks and then came back. Because yeah. the way mom usually did stuff was like, she tried to work it out. So she was never gone for you from you longer than two weeks. So she went for two weeks. We came for two weeks. And then we were leaving. And then she'd be back in two weeks. That's right. how it was supposed to go. So um, we took him to the hospital and he walked inside and we waited in the waiting room and um, he basically walked in and was like, I think I'm having a heart attack. And they're like, come in. And he just, they just sent him right in. So we yeah. just waited in the waiting room and I just, oh, dad's not feeling well, you know. And um, eventually they ended up, uh, basically he was having a heart attack. They prevented, they, they stopped it and then they prevented another one. Mm. And so they're like, okay, we're going to like get y'all fixed up and send you home. And they did. Um, and of course mom was, you know, freaked out and um i think she god mom flew so many times <sighs> i can't remember she must have come home i think she had to come home and uh and then she turned around and went right back yeah and so um we were there and everything was fine and she was checking on us and stuff or whatever and then basically um there was a night like i want to say it was like three or four days after he got out of the hospital um I want to say, and um, we were, you know, obviously I was at the house with you guys the whole time, and um, um, I went out for a movie that night, and then I came back. A horrible mistake. I watched a terrible movie I should never have watched. I hate horror films. Oh my God, what anyway. movie was it? Do you remember? Yeah, it was Seven. Oh. It was bad. I was so horrified What's by that What's in the film. box? <laughs> Yeah, it was it's a great movie, though. It was. I'll never watch it again. <laughs> I will never watch it again. And I was so freaked out that when I came home uh, to the house, I actually slept on your bedroom floor. Oh That's how God. freaked out I was. Kristen. I couldn't even sleep in the guest bedroom. I had just I slept on the floor oh next to God. your bed because I was just like, oh, oh, <laughs> so terrible. And so when we woke up in the morning, you were like, I want to go wake up dad. And I was like, give him a little more time. He needs to sleep in, you know. So I waited until like 11. And then, you know, I was like, OK, fine. You can go wake him up. 11? Yeah, it was 10 or 11, I want to say. Oh, my God. That's because, like a good sleep in, dude. Yeah. Well, I mean, and he was, you know, you know. Yeah, he was older. He was older. He was recovering. Well, I mean, not really. What he was. Well, no, he was 55. His, yeah. He wasn't that old, but he was just recovering. And right. I just wanted him to be able to like sleep if he was going to sleep in, which. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I knew that he would come in, you know what I mean? And get us, you yeah. know, when he woke up and I thought, oh, he's still sleeping in. So that's good. He's getting rest. Right. So I said, go ahead. You can go wake him up. Um, you asked for probably the 10th time. And um, <laughs> and. Uh, and you ran into the back bedroom and I was in the kitchen. I was going to start making breakfast. And then you ran out before you ran out. I could hear you and you yelled, Ma, um, you said, um, Kristen, daddy passed out. And I remember thinking, I don't I just remember thinking, why would you use that phrase? Mm -hmm. Like, I just knew it was bad mm -hmm. because I'm like, that's a really strange phrase 
for you to use. Like, right. we don't know anybody that passes out. Mom doesn't faint, you know, whatever. Right. Like, it's not a thing. <clears throat> And so I said, uh, okay, and I, you came out and said it again, and I was like, all right, so I passed you. And I went back into the bedroom and then into the bathroom, and I saw Dad, and I was like, I didn't want you to walk back in to the bathroom, and so I came right back out and grabbed you when you were in the bedroom and walked back to um, your room, which was kind of across the uh, yeah. living room. And um, the way the house is set up, it's kind of a long ranch house and there's bedrooms on both sides and the master's on one side and all the other bedrooms are on the other side. And um, and so I took you back to your bedroom and I said, just stay here, um, I'll be right back. And because we didn't really know what was going on, um, although I kind of knew when I saw dad, um, I just sat you on the bed and I pretended everything was fine and I said, here, watch Rugrats mm -hmm. and turn on the, I think the TV was actually already on. And then I ran back to check on dad and then I called 911. And um, basically, I had not um, ever seen somebody who was passed before, like mm -hmm. who was actually dead. And but you know, when mm -hmm. you see somebody like, you know, and I think also because dad was just so full of life and like, just so like, I, I just would have known. And yeah. um, uh, dad was in, uh, I think, a Dodger shirt and uh like long pajama pants yeah. right but and the way the the way that the bathroom is people have to understand it's huge it's like the size of a bedroom it's right. not a normal bathroom like there's like this tiny cold you know tile floor it's huge no, it's they, carpeted they, she still has carpet in there yeah, which is it's, fucking it's a, weird <laughs> it's a gigantic wood like custom built um Old it looks school. like a cabin yeah you know um room that's got you know separate bathroom separate tub you know oh sorry <laughs> um so yeah so I called and um, said, I think, you know, um, I said, uh, you know, I basically told them what was going on and that there was a gentleman who had been having heart problems and um, he was back from the hospital and now he seems to be um, incapacitated. Like, I don't remember how I phrased it. And um, so they sent people, uh, they sent the paramedics and I went in to be with you and just sat with you and i said i told you what was going on that i called somebody and um so when did you call mom everything was happening so fast and i didn't know how quickly they were going to get there they came really fast mm -hmm. and so um i basically went in to be with you they showed up i walked them back and then i came back to be with you and then um <clears throat> um they came well one of the uh, paramedics God bless him, uh, walked into the doorway. And um, you at that point had already started like sort of hugging me and you were facing me. You were not facing the TV anymore. And um, and so you didn't see him walk into the room. And he looked at me and he gave me the look that basically told me like, yeah, he's gone. And, um, and I just, I think my eyes probably just got huge. And he, for some strange reason, which I can't explain, but again, God bless this man, he mouthed the words, he didn't say it so you wouldn't hear it, but he mouthed the words, you have to tell her. Mm -hmm. And I was like, because I didn't know what to do. Well, yeah, dude, and you're 22, like what? I was like, do I call mom first? Do I tell Gabby first? Is mom gonna be mad that I took it? I, you know what I mean? I didn't know yeah. what to do. And that man looking at me and saying that to me was like huge. And I was yeah. like, okay. Because you'd already been saying, you know, I don't want anything to be wrong with daddy. I don't, I want him to be okay. And I was like, I know me too. Mm. And so he, I just nodded and he stepped out of the room. And, um, and then I told you, and we both cried and, um, a lot. And then once we were able to calm down a little bit, um, that's when I said, I'm going to go call mommy. I said, so just stay here for a minute. And you were like, okay, you know, cause it was very like safe. Like we were close. We weren't further than maybe 10, 15 feet away from each other. And you could see me through the door, you know, yeah. cause in that bedroom, the door looks into the walkway, which looks into the kitchen, which looked was where the phone was. So you could literally see me the whole time. Cause I didn't even want to be like 10 yeah. feet away from you, but I had to tell her without you there. Yeah. And, um, so I called her and the minute she picked up the phone, she's like, what's wrong? Because mm -hmm. she knows I didn't call her out of nowhere. She would call us at the end of the day when she was done shooting or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I said, D, and I don't remember how I phrased it exactly, but I basically, you know, I said, she's like, what's wrong? Is Gabby okay? And I said, Gabby's all right. And she was like, what's wrong? And I said, Christopher's gone. 
And she said, where's Gabrielle? That was the first thing she asked. Where's Gabrielle? Well, okay, she's so right here. Well, after you and I had this conversation, mom and I took like a mother daughter weekend. And oh, I was yeah? like talking to her about it. And she was like, yes, that's all accurate. She's like, but when she called me and said, Christopher's gone, I said, what three times made her repeat it oh, until yeah. she finally said he's dead, D. Oh. Yeah. She was like, I couldn't hear it. Right. I believe that. But it was also a very traumatic moment. So sometimes I can't like, even you know imagine I mean? at 22 having to A, see a dead body, B, then be responsible for a little six year old, and then C, have to call your fucking other boss and be like, this is what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, that that totally rings a bell. I do remember that. That makes sense that she like made me repeat it. And like, cause mom's a very, mom's always been one of those people that she's not about euphemisms. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's not about, oh, this person passed away or right. this person, like, especially in a moment of like life or death moment, yeah. she's like, what do you mean? Like, tell me what you're talking yeah. about. Like, is that's very, that, that makes a lot of sense. That's very her. Yeah. And, um, and so I think that was the, probably the only reason I felt okay saying he's dead because mm -hmm. like that seems a very harsh thing right. to say in most cases, yeah. but she needed to hear it. She yeah. needed to know what I meant. And, um, and then she immediately, she was like, where's Gabrielle? And I said, she's right here in the bedroom. I can see her from where I am. I said, she's in the front room and she goes, okay, I need to talk to her. And I said, okay. <clears throat> and so I got you and you talked to mom for a minute and obviously, you know, we're crying and talking and then um and then she got you off the phone and she said she would call you back and she got me on the phone and she said i'm gonna make some phone calls and i will call you back and i said okay and we got off the phone and she called everybody to come and take care of us yeah and um and um my best friend in kindergarten sarah bass um she was like i i hung up i called um sally, sally her mom mm -hmm. and was like i need you to go to the house take sarah so her and gabby can play and like don't leave mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, mom called me and was like, go to Sarah's. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And, um, but before that, mom had asked me, I don't know if you wanted me to talk yeah, about yeah. this part, but mom had said, um, I called Sally, you're going to take her over to Sarah's. And I was like, okay. And she said, I've called John, you know, he's going to come and handle everything. And I was like, okay. And um, she said, I need you to take Gabby in to say goodbye to her dad. She said, I'm sorry, I have to ask you to do this. I would not I would never do this, but I'm not there. And I was like, it's fine, D. And she said, but I need you to take, him, take her in there and say goodbye, because this is the last time she's going to see him. And I was like, of course. So we, um, I got off the phone and I got you and I said, come on, we're going to go say goodbye to dad. I just acted like it was normal, because that's the thing with children. If you don't freak out, they don't freak out. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. children are very, they pick up on everything, you know? And so I said, well, we're gonna go say bye to daddy. And so we went in and sat down with him on the floor. And, you know, I just talked to him like I would normally talk to him because it didn't feel like he was gone. I mean, this literally just happened, but it just right. didn't, it just didn't make sense. Like there's some part of your brain that like, this isn't make believe, like he's still here. Like, I don't even understand what's going on, you know? Yeah. And um, we said goodbye and, um, told him we loved him and you know um and um had a cry and then we like got up after a while and walked out and we got you ready we both had to get dressed and then um got in the car to go to sarah's i don't remember any of that i just know that we did i'm yeah. like i was not i have no recollection of going back into that room yeah and I remember when I called you to ask you all this and you told me and you were like, we went in, I, we kneeled down next to him and I put my hand on his back so mm -hmm. that you wouldn't be scared. Mm -hmm. And hearing you tell me like this whole experience that I don't remember at all. Um, and I'm like, did my six year old brain disassociate or is it just like I was six and don't remember a lot? But you think you'd remember something like that. And I have the other flashes that are so clear. Because mm -hmm. um, I ha that there's no memory of that. Yeah, that kind of makes sense to me because, I mean, you know, trauma is a crazy thing. And when you went in to go see dad, look for dad, you were like, where's dad? Right. Dad was alive, you know? And then when you saw dad, you didn't know what was going on. But when mm -hmm. we went back in to say goodbye, you knew that he was dead. Yeah. So... 
in whatever that means and whatever in a six-year-old brain whatever dead means you right. know which it's hard to even know because right. i don't think you'd lost anybody at that point your grandparents Maybe were like all alive fish. right it's like <laughs> you know and so um but yeah we went in and i was just like that's the thing that's i think problematic about our society is people act like um in a lot of ways like the dead should be put away or they should be somewhere else or whatever i don't know like i said like i put my hand on dad's back and was rubbing his back like he was just there like he was with us because he was essentially you know and um but yeah i wanted you to know like this is still your dad like other people like when people pass it's like it's a corpse no it's a person right. and there's there's still this person that i love yeah and there's still this person that i'm you know feel connected to and so you know but um yeah so we got out of there but i don't i don't i'm not surprised that you don't remember it because i think it was probably probably pretty hard to to um process yeah you know what i mean well i mean there's the it's so crazy to look at it from all the different experiences because it's crazy to think of a six-year-old little girl sitting there with like a, her dead father on the floor saying goodbye and talking to him it's crazy to me to think of a 22 year old sitting next to a dead body on the floor like taking care of this little girl like that's insane to go through that yeah it's you know it's one of those things where even mom said to me like if you had imagined this if somebody had said you had, like they gave you the scenario did you act the way you thought you would act right. i was like no absolutely no. not yeah. i thought I, if you had asked me what i would do in that situation i would have been like i would have fallen apart and been crying and yeah. screaming and whatever but like you know when you are in the situation it's just it's all you can think about is i have to take care of this little person like right. i have to take care of her that's the most important thing you know and um and by that point, you know, I'd been taking care of you for like eight or nine months. I absolutely loved you. And I was like, this is the most important thing. And there's this level of, um, yeah, you just, you just go into like caretaker mode. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just go straight into caretaker mode. And, and like autopilot, like you almost mm -hmm. like, you're like, I can't will process later and like this right. is what we have to get through right and the, for some people they may not understand like oh why would you go back in there why would you take a child in because i think again i think people have a really problematic relationship to death in this country mm -hmm. and i thought that that was literally after i thought about it i was like that's brilliant yeah because that's one of the things that so many children don't get to have when people die people don't get to have when people die there's no yeah. closure there's no i never yeah. i never got to say goodbye like i don't remember i just remember this traumatic moment right. and then i walked out now that does happen to be the case apparently like you remember seeing dad and then walking out well but at least you got to have somewhere in your psyche yeah. somewhere in your soul you got to sit and tell your dad you loved him and you got to say goodbye yeah you know and we got and, to do that and i will say i've talked about this before in the john edwards episode um like i i do in some flashes whether it was you know when i found him or whatever i do remember seeing him on the floor mm -hmm. i never got to see I think his name in the book is Jake, but my high school sweetheart that passed mm -hmm. in a car accident. I never got to see his body. I remember I wanted to go when he got brought back to the morgue and his mom was like, no, mm -hmm. like, please don't. So out of respect for her, I didn't. Terrible mistake because I've had dreams. I've had moments where I'm like walking down the street and I will follow someone because it looks like them. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, my brain didn't connect the this person's dead and this is the body mm -hmm. like it did when i was little mm -hmm. so it was a lot harder for me to rationalize that when i was 18. yeah yeah it 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 provides a certain amount of process i think most people are terrified that they're going to be traumatized or scarred like if they see the person they love who's passed right. and i understand that yeah it's how we're raised it's what we're it's what we're taught to it's how we're taught to deal or not deal with death. And um, I think because I've had so many people um, die actually in the last 10 years, um, I started sort of following this, um, um, I can't remember, <laughs> funeral director. She's like, a, she's a licensed mortuary, like director, whatever. And she basically teaches people about death. Mm. And she's, she wants to, she's a death advocate. Like, yeah. and she wants people to become more comfortable with it. And so I've started, you know, um, 
I watched her, you know, she has YouTube and all of these different things. Her name's Caitlin Doty. And she just helps people to have like a more, a better understanding of death. What happens, what it looks mm. like, what funerals, what takes place, yeah. the, all the behind the scenes. Oh, that's because, great. Yeah, it's really great. Because by the time my grandmother, who was like my best friend, who I adored, passed, I got to actually be with her um, and ultimately with my father and my mother after they both passed. And it was not traumatic for me the way I think it would be traumatic for yeah. some other people because I had had all this process and yeah. I had watched all these videos and read her books. And it's, um, you know, a hundred years ago, we all took care of our own people. Yeah. We right. washed them, we bathed them, we dressed them, right. they were in our house, we had wakes, that's what we did. And so it's really not that strange. Like yeah. because for the entire history of humanity, we've always been taking care of our own people. Mm -hmm. So it's not strange for a child or an adult to walk back in and and be with this person and process and say that they love them. And you know, the part that's more unnatural is the person got taken away and then we never see them again, you know. Right. But that's just what we're used to in the last, you know, um, century in this country but so i could understand some people maybe not, not understanding it but i think it's also just sort of a societal norm that like oh we don't look at that we'll take that away right, go away right. you know and i don't honestly think that's healthy yeah you know? I, I agree with that um so mom flies back uh -huh. from new zealand obviously yeah like um, fast like i don't know how she got back that yeah fast. and i remember i'll never forget her telling me that she got to the airport and they were like escorting her to the front of the line to get on the plane um and some guy who was you know probably having a really fucking shitty day at the airport um was like how the why the fuck does she get to cut in front like audibly yelled Ooh. in line and she yeah. you know mom is like the nicest human on the planet oh, yeah, and absolutely. she turned around with like tears in her eyes and was like because my husband just died and my little girl needs me yeah and the whole line fell silent she turned back around and got on the fucking plane <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was like that yeah. man will forever regret his life that mm -hmm. day he's gonna um, keep his mouth shut next time and so she flew back it was what probably like two days by the time she could actually get there no it's bananas mom literally must have packed a bag and been taken to the airport mm. and they got her on the next flight. Wow. Because I can't remember, I think New Zealand is like something strange, like 17 or 18 hours ahead. So technically it's tomorrow right. there oh, and right, all that right. weird stuff. So, but it was, she was awake. It wasn't the middle of the night when we yeah. called. It was morning for us. It was probably like the next day in the afternoon for her. I can't remember, but it, she, because remember Maria and her husband yeah. came to be with us after yeah. we got back from Sally's, they came to be with us that night. And the next morning mom was home. Oh, wow. Like the next, well, I shouldn't say morning, the next day. Yeah. At some point in the next day she was home and that flight, even a direct flight. It's ridiculous. It takes like it's, 17 hours. I think, no, I think 17, it's longer. Well, no, it took us longer on the second, whoopsie on the second trip. Sorry, because we had to um, have a layover. Got it. Okay. Sorry. We had to have a layover. <laughs> so we had to stop in like Fiji or Tahiti oh, and then wait okay, an hour okay. and then fly. So that took 22 hours. Yeah. That That's why that one took gnarly. a long time. Um, so she came back. She, I think she was there for like a week. She came back and basically, you know, she did what mom does. She took yeah. care of you. She took care of me. She, you know, we got um, the memorial service set up for dad. We mm -hmm. had it. And then we all got back on the plane and went back to New Zealand like yeah. two days later. Yep. Um, and mom recently, you know, she joined TikTok, oh, which right, really yes. means mom joined TikTok and I'm fucking making all of her TikToks. Right, That's of course. what that means. Of course. Um, <laughs> and um, we do this thing called like behind the scenes with D. It's actually very cute. Um, and uh and where she tells stories about like the different films she's done. So of course mm -hmm. she did one about um, the Frighteners oh, with yeah. Peter Jackson. And it's a really touching story. I encourage you to go like watch it on her page because the way she tells it is really beautiful. Um, but she basically, you know, when all of this stuff started happening, she flew back the first time when dad's first health thing happened. And then obviously like when he passed. So she had flown back and forth like mm -hmm. a ridiculous amount of times mm -hmm. at this point. And, um, and when she got the call from you, Peter was like Peter Jackson, the director of the the film, who everybody knows now from like Lord of the Rings and King mm -hmm. Kong and like every movie everywhere. Um, was like, "D, just go. Like, we'll figure it out. Just go." Which in Hollywood is unheard of. It's like if you're on mm -hmm. set, you're on a tight schedule. You're you got to finish your job. It's like the show must go on. Mm -hmm. um, and when we all got back and she saw Peter for the first time, he was like, "I never thought you'd be back, D." 
I thought we were going to have to figure something out. I did not think you'd be back. Oh, wow. That's right. I forgot yeah. about that. And um, I'll never yeah, forget. Yeah, no do well. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'll never forget when I got older, she told me a story that when we got back, you know, the whole set, even before dad had died, was so kind to us. And like Michael J. Fox was like playing Foursquare with me on his Mm -hmm. breaks. And like, he's like an A-list actor playing with a six-year-old. Like it was just the whole cast and crew was just really amazing. Um, I remember Damon very well, who was one of the crew guys. Oh, he was one of the sons of one of the producers, but yeah. he, was a, he was a little, like, a runner, a PA. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Um, he was I, so I remember, sweet. like, specific people very vividly. Mm-hmm. Um, but she told me when I got older, she's like, when I had to go back, one of the scenes that I had to do um, was when I have the shotgun and I shoot Michael. And I remember being in the scene and shooting Michael and then seeing your dad hit the floor. And it was like an out of body experience. And I can't imagine as a like mother and actress going to like finish that job, what that must have been like. Mm-hmm. That was like my first experience of this is what happens when shit blows up in your life. Mm-hmm. Like you gotta fucking handle it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's served me so greatly <laughs> throughout the shit shows that's exploded in my life. Um, and I, when we went back, um, she, at the end of the movie went into the production office to like settle up whatever the, uh, the bills for the flights were because they kept saying like, it's fine. We'll, we'll figure it out at the end. So she went in to go settle up and the accountant looked at her and was like, Peter's taking care of all of it. This is his, his gift to you and your family. Wow. And, and just absorbed all of that. Wow. Yeah, I remember her saying that, um, I almost called him Bob Zemeckis, like we're friends. <laughs> That's what she called him. Uh, Robert Zemeckis, who was obviously the producer of you know Back to the Future yeah. and all of those movies, he was the producer for this film. Yeah. And she had said, like, he's being so gracious. Like, he's being, I mean, this is ridiculous. How many times, like, she's had to fly back and forth. And yeah. so she was like, everybody, obviously, Peter, for sure. But to have somebody of, you know, Bob Zemeckis's, like, level also being like, it's fine, D, like, we'll take care of it, you know? Yeah. But yeah, it's funny. Peter clearly didn't know mom well enough to know that she'd be back. But right. That, and the, the thing that's, you know, I'm sure it's surprising to a lot of people, um, like, if they hear, like, oh, yeah, your husband died, so you just flew back a week later and took care of it. But the crazier part is that we landed, you, me, and her landed, went straight back to the apartment after a, that was like the 22 hour flight because that was the layover we had to take on the way back because they were scrambling to just get us tickets back. And she walked in and took a shower after not sleeping really much on that flight, walked in, took a shower, got ready, left, and went to set. It's fucking within ridiculous. an like hour or two of us landing. It's literally and ridiculous. And I was like, D, you could probably go tomorrow. She goes, No, 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 no. It's already been a week that I've been gone. And she's like, they've done enough to work around all of this. And it, she's like, Kristen, it'll be better if I work. It'll just be better anyway. And I was like, that's true. So she she went off and did her thing. But yeah, and then, and then of course these amazing, beautiful, wonderful people in New Zealand that were so good to us and we had so much fun with were just like doubled down on the love and the care and like for everybody, like for you and me. Like I was like, I'm the nanny. I'm nobody. Like why? why You're not nobody. And the fact that you went through that, that's a traumatic experience by itself for a 22 year old to go through with, you know, like that, that is its own thing. 100%. Um, but the fact that you <sighs> really trying not to get emotional, guys, it's been a fucking struggle this entire hour. I'm doing my best. You're doing very that well. That you were there to get me and mom through that was like, I, I it's, there are no words. Cause like, who knows how I would have experienced that situation and that trauma if it was with someone else who didn't care as much or didn't know how to handle it so you'll always have such a special place in mine and mom's life because of that you know and all of it all the other stuff and playing in the sandbox and you know all of the things (laughs) but it it really as an adult now looking back on that 
I don't know how I would have handled that if I had to go through that at 22. Yeah, it's... um. Oh, no, you're going to get emotional. We're just a fucking big <laughs> pile of tears today, guys. I know. Is there Kleenex? <laughs> there's wine. There's there's water. But where is the Kleenex? Um, you know, but yeah, I mean, it's not something you ever expect that's going to happen. And you just deal with it. But yeah, that bonded us. I mean, that bonded you and me and mom, like yeah. all of us together in a way that was just, you know, obviously I never thought would happen. And um New Zealand was such a beautiful place and people were so wonderful to us. And she's like, I'm so sorry to have to ask you to come back again. I know you just got back. And yeah. I was like, D, I would never trade Christopher for anything. I'm like, but asking me to go back to New Zealand's not a big ask. It's right, fine. Like, don't right. worry. I was like, it's okay. But, you know, I was, I was, it was all very surreal. It just didn't yeah. seem, you know, real. But yeah, the, um, the, uh, I think that is kind of, and it's funny because it was so early on, but I think maybe that's when, you know, we kind of became the three musketeers for a while. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? And because we just had to all get each other through that. And, um, but yeah, everybody was, <laughs> I'm just thinking of that photo of us in the fucking safari. <laughs> um, oh yeah. <laughs> car in Africa, the Land Rover. Oh my God. We're freezing. And we were freezing. And like, you were in some like weird green colored thing. So you look like a pea and I'm like bundled. And mom has like a sweatshirt wrapped around no, her no, no. head. She has a pair of your pants tied right? around her head. <laughs> Because she's trying to get her ears warm. Yeah. It was so funny. Oh, my God. Yeah. Who would have thought you go on safari, you freeze your ass off. Like, you think you're going to be dying in the heat. Right. No, 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 no. Right. It is cold. It is freezing. Right. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, um, we, um, the whole thing, it, yeah, it was just surreal. And, you know, obviously, you've all been like my family ever since then. You know what I mean? We have been family ever since then. And, yeah. And the... I think it was like always unspoken with you and I, we were just always like that with each other. But when mom was like, you know, Kristen, like she would speak to it, which is just rare that people, but mom's obviously a really deeply loving and beautiful and authentic and connected person. And so, but she would say those things like, I'm so glad that you were with Gabby and yeah. I love you and I appreciate you. And, you know, and um, which meant the world to me because, you know, to be, to be with somebody in such a traumatic situation, you know, it's easy for people to be like, what did you do? Mm -hmm. What did you, what did you not do? What, did, where did you, you know what I mean? That, that never happened. That never came up. Mom was just like, I'm so sorry. Like, and I remember thinking like, <laughs> you know, I was just used to be like, am I going to be in trouble? Did I do something wrong? Like, and of oh. course she never even yeah. thought, thought in those terms, like n never ever. And, um, well, nor would I expect her to, I mean, no, I mean, it was weird. Like I told you when the police showed up because they have to, when somebody passes away, you yeah. know, the police showed up and they were looking at me strangely. And I was oh like, my God. yeah, it was really upsetting. And they were like, where's his medication? What did, you know? Oh my God. You're like, as if this isn't fucking horrible enough. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what made me realize. And they're like, famous at the time. Like, fuck man right and that's what made me realize like i'm so used to mom being so loving and right. understanding and and just like supportive and like i'm like this could have gone a totally different oh, way because, if this had happened with somebody else right because there are fucked up people in the world and what if the nanny is the culprit and like right. oh my god you ew. know ew. oh my god my brain never even went yeah there. no it's terrifying because i mean i was like why are you looking at me like that like the cops were like well where were yeah. you i'm like we were sleeping in the bedroom you're like i here. actually was on her I was floor on her fucker floor. exactly <laughs> <laughs> I have an alibi. Seriously. I saw I like, seven. I was scared shitless. <laughs> oh my God. Seriously. That film traumatized me more than anything. Oh my God. But yeah, no, it was, and people were just so lovely to us. They took such good care of us. Yeah. I mean, that, that New Zealand will always have a very special place in my heart because of mine too, even though you I, know. you know, don't remember lots of it. It's definitely somewhere I like hope to go back to one day. And I want to talk a little bit about signs because I just, well, when this will air, it will have been, a long a season ago but we had john edward on to do an episode oh right 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 yeah which was wait 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 you had john john edward yeah here well he did it over zoom but yeah he did yeah oh my god see i'm out yeah, of it it aired so, yesterday oh, you're not oh, that okay, behind okay jeez i'm like how did i miss this yeah no um okay. and obviously you were there when with um with mom and I the first time that we went mm -hmm. to, well, when she went to go get a reading and he ended up bringing both of us out because our people came through and mom was like, thanks for hijacking my reading. What the fuck? Um, and 
anyways, so we talked a lot about signs on that episode and signs from our loved ones. And when dad died that first Father's Day, mom and I planted a tree in the backyard. Mm -hmm. Um, That tree is now huge. Um, It's crazy that it's it's been so many, you know, over two dozen years. Um, And the first week it was planted, an owl came and sat in that tree and was like very vocal outside. Um, And ever since then, I've been like my sign my thing with my dad is owls. Mm -hmm. When we went to South Africa, um, the the safari part uh, area that we were in, it had like one top level where you ate breakfast and then you walked downstairs. There was like a little library down there. And I went down there one day like exploring and adventuring around. And I looked over at the window and there was a little owl in the middle of the day sitting like right outside that window. Do you not remember this? No, I remember the snake that was out <laughs> on the uh, deck when you were out on the deck and I had a heart attack. Oh, I don't oh, remember that. That was what I remember, but that was a separate <laughs> issue. Um, um, wow, no, I yeah. didn't remember and that. And I remember looking at it and being like, wow, this is wild. Like, I am I was in fourth grade, but I did know that owls are nocturnal and like it is d- in fact daytime outside. Um, anyways, we went on the day safari because we went out like a couple times a day. We went out, came back. Still sitting there six hours later, came wow. downstairs the next morning, still sitting there, hadn't moved, same fucking spot. And I was like, wow. if you choose to see signs, like they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like everywhere. I've had owls fly across my fucking car in the middle of the day, like mm-hmm. weird fucking shit, you know? And so if you're open to seeing them, I think they're everywhere. Yeah. And remember, Bruce talked about seeing a giant owl up in a tree on the cul-de-sac. Yeah. And then it flew down yep. and up, like, over over the top of him and the house yeah. and back. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, Dad's yeah. a show-off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. He um, is. This has been so incredibly wonderful to reminisce on some of the fun memories and and hear your perspective on what was such a life-changing kind of event for both of us can you tell people because i know you do a lot of advocacy for mental health um which we share that um can you tell people where they can find your pages online if they want to come dive into some of that yeah um i have um a page i mean my regular page is private but i might open that back up again be careful because you'll have droves of fmlers oh. come in. i mean they're all wonderful i'm just saying <laughs> right, like, right. if you want to be private <laughs> yeah no the stuff the stuff that i really am passionate about and want to talk about um is basically at my um kiki's darlings page um my grandma always um would always be like how are you, darling? So that was my <laughs> so my my people who I love. Anybody that um, is uh, somebody that I'm close to, or people that I love who maybe I'm not close to, but understand, you know, the struggles that you know we all deal with at different times. Um, so I just called it Kiki's Darlings, and that's at um, Instagram and also TikTok. There's only a few videos there, but I didn't I'm fucking know you were on TikTok. Yes. Bitch. Well, because I need your help. <laughs> okay. Story of my life. <laughs> uh, right. No, I figured it out. I figured it out. But, you know, I need some improvement. But, yeah, it's it's Just mental dropping health. dropping that on me like, oh, and I'm on TikTok. I, like, I don't that. even know that. Oh, my God. That's so rude. Funny. Well, because, you know, it's 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 just a small little concern at the moment, which is fine. But, um, <laughs> but it's, fun. you know, this year has been there's been a lot going on in the last year and a half for me. And so which I won't even get into. But um, I realized that I posted some videos and it was about a year ago. <laughs> because yep. we're in mental health awareness month again so yeah. i'm definitely going to be posting some more and i hope people will stop by and say hi yeah i love that and i love you thank you for being I love here you too thank you for having me it was fun we got through it with minimal tears yes yes Pr- i think we'd be proud very, of us. very proud of us too love it love you <laughs> love you too <laughs> I want to thank, God, what are we even calling her now? Nell, Kristen, Pookie, um, for coming on today and really sitting down with me and just giving me the gift of not reliving that, but feeling at peace with what I experienced, um, seeing the strength of what she experienced and what my mom experienced, and really kind of having a little bit of closure around such a traumatic event that really impacted my life in a very large way. Um, And 
I am very grateful to have had such incredible, strong women around me during that time in my life that have continued to be such an important part of my life moving forward. I hope you guys got something out of this episode today, um, apart from an insight into me and my history, but I hope it gave you something on your own journeys to be able to take forward with you. As always, make sure you guys are subscribed so you never miss an episode. Keep up with us on Instagram at FML Talk. Podcast. If you need more FML content in your life, there are five mini bonus episodes that you can go binge at your leisure on patreon.com slash FML talk. You can also find access to the private self-love Facebook group on Patreon, and you can even join book club, which zooms with me every Tuesday night. If you want to check us out on YouTube, you can watch all of our episodes live in studio at youtube.com slash FML talk. I love you all so much have a self-love cocktail on me. Cheers.